So let's look at a situation where there's a skier that's going to go down a slope. Um, and we're going to assume that there's no friction acting here, which is unrealistic, but it's an easy way of doing it. So we'll look at the potential energy at different positions there, and it's going to start at rest. So as they start to go down the hill, their potential energy is going to convert to kinetic. But if we work out the potential energy A at A first of all, you can look at MGH, as we said before. So you're looking at a mass of a skier of 100 times by gravity times by the uh, height that it's actually got to start with. So it's going to be 50 metres. So looking at that, we're going to get around about um, 49,000 joules there. OK, so that's your potential energy at A. The potential energy at B, you can do the same sort of thing there and substitute exactly the same sort of formula in there. And looking at that there, you will get a value of... 15 uh, inside there for the B part of it so that's one way of doing it you can substitute the 15 into the formula or you could do 15 fiftieths of the initial potential energy at the start so there's two ways of working that out you see the 15 fiftieths of the potential energy at the start or you would uh, put 15 in there in place of the 50 and that'll tell you the energy in joules there if we look at uh, the kinetic energy then at C or oh, by the way that value is 14,700 joules the potential energy, or so the kinetic energy at C is going to be uh, how much it's fallen through. So it's going to fall through 20 meters there, uh, which means that's how much is going to be lost and converted into kinetic energy. So it's 20 meters out of 50 that's going to convert through. So you're basically two fifths of the original value of that 49,000 joules, and that'll tell you the kinetic energy that's been gained between the positions A and C. And you can use that later on to work out the speed rather than using the equations of motion. So looking at that there, um, don't forget the energy, the energy lost. Uh, you could, the other way of doing this, of course, is to work out the potential energy that's left over at C and subtract that from the initial potential energy, and that'll also tell you the potential energy that's lost there. So you do subtraction there, and that's another way of doing it. So there's a couple ways of doing it. You do it as a fraction there, or do it as a subtraction of the initial take away what's left there, and that's going to be the amount that's converted. So it'll be 19,600 joules. Now, if you want the velocity at C, then you can just do it in terms of energy now. You don't have to use the equation of motion because kinetic energy has a formula there which includes uh, the velocity. So if you put in the kinetic energy of uh, 19,600 joules and equate that to half mv squared and you rearrange it, you can work out the velocity that way and work out the speed. And this is all assuming that the, uh, we're ignoring friction at the moment there and drag. So if you put that value in there and put in the mass there of the skier, uh, which was 100, and then you look, uh, end up with your v squared there. You've just got to do half of 100 is 50. And uh, if you divide 3 by 50, then you should better find the v. So looking at that there, 19,600 joules. Divide 3 by 50, that gives you a v squared. So obviously you're going to get v is the square root of that number there. So 19,600 divided by 50 is 392. And the square root of 392 is 19.8 meters per second. 